This problem is about a shattered plate. Basically, if you imagine that the plane of the paper is the plane of the ground, and the plate somehow falls down on the ground, and then once it hits the ground, it shatters into three pieces that go flying off in three different directions. But all of these directions are parallel to the floor plane. Okay, so before the plate hits the ground, all of its momentum is in the direction perpendicular to the floor, the vertical direction. And once it hits, it shatters into three pieces and fly off in the horizontal plane parallel to the floor. And what we're given are the velocities and the directions of the velocities with which the three pieces fly off. And we're given the mass of one of the pieces. And we're asked what the masses of the other two pieces are. So the key to this question is the following. The momentum in the plane, the horizontal plane of the floor, before the collision is equal to zero because all of the momentum was directed perpendicular to the floor. There was no momentum in the direction of the floor. And in addition, there are no external forces acting on the plate in the floor. So if I look at the impulse momentum theorem that says that the change in momentum is equal to the impulse of external forces, if I am looking at the change in momentum in the horizontal plane, I have to have external forces in that plane for that momentum to change. But since there are no external forces in the ground plane, then there will be no change in the momentum in the ground plane. In other words, if I add the momenta of these three pieces together, I should get the momentum of the plate in the same direction, which is in the horizontal directions. And since there was no momentum in the horizontal direction before the collision, then the momenta of these three pieces after collision should add up to zero. And since it should add up to zero in a vectorial fashion, then I can break that into x and y components, where my choice of x and y now are the two axes that determine the two dimensions of the floor. So x and y are both in the plane of the floor, and I have to conserve momenta in both directions because there is no impulse in either direction. The impulse of external forces in either direction is zero, in both directions is zero, Therefore, the change in momentum in both directions should be zero. So that's what we're going to write down. The external impulse, the impulse by external forces, is equal to zero. So that implies that the change in momentum of the system, which is the three pieces of the plate, is equal to zero. And of course, this statement has two components to it because this is a vectorial statement. So it has the two components, x and y, and these are separate. So the change in momentum in the x direction is equal to zero, and the change in momentum in the y direction is, are, is also equal to zero. And these two equations are separate. That is to say, these are independent of one another. The change in momentum in x is 0, independent of what happens in y. And the change in momentum in y is 0, independent of what happens in x. But they happen to be both 0 in this case. So then what I need to do is I need to calculate the momenta in both directions in x and y. And remind ourselves that the momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. And what I've written here is the change in momentum in the system that is composed of all three masses. So when I'm calculating the momentum before and after, I have to add up the momenta from all the different pieces. So, first of all, I'm going to calculate initial momentum and final momentum in the x direction. 
and then I'm going to calculate initial momentum and final momentum in the y direction and I'm going to say that these two subtracted from each other should be equal to zero in both cases. So initial momentum is equal to zero, right? Because there was no movement in either x or y. So p naught x is zero and p naught y is zero. That is to say, the mass of the plate times the velocity of the plate in either x or y was equal to zero before the collision with the floor. Now after, I'm going to break that into the x component and the y component. So for the x component, This is the sum of all the x momenta for the three pieces. Each momentum is mass times velocity. So px is mass times the component of the velocity in this direction. So that's going to be the first mass multiplied by the component of the velocity in the x direction for the first, plus the second mass multiplied by the component of the velocity in the x direction for the second. And here, this is what I'm calling v1 and this is what I'm calling V2 and this is what I'm calling V3 because these are the three pieces and I don't have to label them as final but this is V1 final, V2 final, V3 final but um, the initial were all zero so I don't have to have that extra label so that's my final momentum and let's calculate what that is. First mass is something I don't know, so I'm just going to leave it. And then the component of the velocity in the x direction for v1, if this is v1 and I want to calculate the x direction, so that's opposite to that angle 25 that I'm given. So opposite to that angle, so that means it's sine, and then it's going to be pointing in this direction, which is opposite to what I decided was going to be my positive x. So I know then that this is going to be minus 3 meters per second multiplied by sine 25 degrees. And for mass 2, I don't know what that is yet. And the x component of v2, this is v2, the x component is the component that's adjacent to that 45 degrees. It's going to be cosine 45, even though sine and cosine of 45 are the same. But just to be pedagogical, 1.79 multiplied by cosine 45 degrees. And of course, it's in the positive direction. And then for the third piece, it's moving all in y, so it has no x component. So the velocity in x is 0 for the third piece. So that's the final momentum in the x direction. The final momentum in the y direction We'll do the same thing, but now for the y. So the first mass is something I don't know. And the component of the velocity is going to be 3 meters per second multiplied by cosine 25, and it's going to be in the positive direction. And for the second mass, it's going to be m2, 1.79, sine 45, but like I said, it doesn't matter. Sine and cosine of 45 are exactly the same number, which is 1 over root 2. And then for the third piece of the plate, it's going to be the momentum in the y direction is going to be m3 multiplied by v3y. And v3y is going to be negative 3.07. And 
the, the mass 3 I'm given as 1.3 kilograms multiplied by minus 3.07 in the y direction. So if I work out the numbers here, then I find that P of X is equal to 3 sine 25. That comes out to 1.27. So it's minus 1.27 M1. And 1.759 cosine also turns out to be 1.27 m2 plus 0 and pfy is 3 cosine 25 that comes out to 2.72 and like I said this is the same as this so it's also 1.27 m2 and it's minus 3 times 1.3 and that comes out to 399 okay the next thing we're gonna say is what we just said before which is that the since the impulse of external force is equal to zero that means the change in momentum is equal to zero that means that the final momentum in x should be equal to the initial momentum in x and the final momentum in y should be equal to the final the initial momentum in y and these two things are zero so I know then that these two things should be equal to zero so now I have two equations in two unknowns m1 and m2 m1 and m2 and I see that the coefficient of m2 is the same, so maybe I'll just subtract these two equations to get rid of this part. So maybe I'll subtract this equation minus that one. So I'll say 2.72 minus, minus 1.27, all of this multiplied by m1 plus, like I said, this is going to get rid of this piece. Well, I'll just keep it for completeness. And then 399 minus 0 is just 399. And then 0 minus 0 is just 0. So you see that this will cancel out M2. And then you see that 2.72 minus minus 1.27. So that's plus. So that's a 9, a 9, and a 3. Look at that. So I get, oh, look, I missed it. I missed the minus sign here. This should be a minus sign. So I'll just correct that. And then that makes this a minus sign. So let me just confirm that I didn't make any other mistakes. So. This was a minus, this was a plus, and this was a plus, this was a plus, this was a minus, and now if I subtract this minus, so equation 2 minus equation 1, then 2.72 minus minus, that's a plus, and this turns out to be 399, and then minus so plus minus, so this cancels out, so this comes out to zero, and minus 3.9 minus zero is minus 3.99, and a zero minus zero is zero, so that means 3.99 m1 is equal to 3.99, which means that m1 is equal to one kilogram. Since m1 is equal to one kilogram, I will sub back into one, If I put M1 equal to 1 kilogram, so that means that minus 1.27 is equal to 1.27 M2, so that means that M2 is also equal to 1 kilogram. 
and that concludes this problem but I can just recap it at the beginning before the collision the momentum of the plate was vertical it had no horizontal component in, in either X or Y so we said that the initial momenta in X and Y were both zero we also said there were no external forces in the horizontal plane so the external impulse the impulse by external forces was equal to zero to zero so the change in momenta in the horizontal plane was equal to zero so that meant that the final momentum was equal to the initial momentum and the final momenta was the sum of the momenta of all the pieces and the initial momentum was zero because there was no movement in the horizontal plane and then we sub in with the masses as variables and we get these final answers.